Hello, everyone. Joseph here with thehealingmarket.org. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. <clears throat> isn't, thank you so isn't technology wonderful? <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, today, I'm very excited to have Stephanie Finn on, um, which I've met, I, I guess, through Facebook, right? Right. We, we met actually from the Kevin Moore show. I think you had right. contacted me. Right. And then right. we, yeah, then we became friends on Facebook. Yes. And uh, Stephanie is a proud Ontarian here with me. Actually, I'm a Newfoundlander, and I'm, but now I'm an Ontario. I'm from Ontario. I say I'm from Newfoundland, but I'm embracing Ontario. And uh, yeah. And um, Stephanie shares beautiful messages on Facebook that I really enjoy. Maybe you can tell us a bit about your messages and your journey and anything else you'd like to share. Absolutely. Well, I share this. I won't, I won't let this be a lengthy introduction because I share it almost every time. And a lot of people already know, you know, like the kind of story that, that, that um, I guess you could say allowed me to become a channeler. I became a channeler really overnight. But looking back, uh, it was a very lengthy process that brought me up to becoming a channeler, which means that after um, many years of just one challenge after another in my life, like a lot of us have had, you know, many, many challenges and many problems in our lives, especially when we want to wake up, uh, that we, we, they seem to be part of our script, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, I just reached a point where I had had enough and I was willing to accept responsibility for all the conflict that I was creating in my own mind. And that brought me to the study of A Course in Miracles, which was instrumental uh, in helping me forgive. You know, and there's so much more I could say about A Course in Miracles, but the bottom line was that I learned through the course to accept the conflict that I was creating and to work with it, to forgive it, uh, which is a very easy process, but it can be a very excruciatingly painful process as well as we unravel layers, you know, as we unravel the self concepts that we have so carefully orchestrated. So that brought me up to, you know, so I was very dedicated to that path. And I had started meditating, and I had a very, um, really disciplined life in terms of really giving my mind and my life over to, to our creator, you know, and I, I would get up every morning, and I would say, my father, use me as an instrument of your peace. That was my only interest. I didn't want anything else other than that. And I didn't know how that was going to happen because, you know, really we do have to relinquish the how. If, when we relinquish the how, we open ourselves up for greatness. And so that, what happened was, I, after watching a documentary called Awake, which was about uh, Yogananda, I went to bed one night and three o'clock in the morning, I began to receive sentences, beautiful sentences. They kept, they kept coming into my mind over and over and over stream. They were just reaming constantly into my mind. And I just got up, I opened up my Gmail and I started typing out the sentences. And over a period of a couple of days, those sentences became, um, I, you know, I typed them out, the, 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 the words became sentences, the sentences became poems. And then five days later, I had written a book of a 100 poems. In five days. In five days. And uh, the, the name of the book, uh, I was given the back book cover and the title and the name of the book was Let the Love Light In and the back book title um, was just an amazing back book title. It was given to me verbatim. So this was really, I mean, yes, the book came through me, but it didn't come from me. And the angels say, you know, this is not a co-creation, but rather it is a collaboration. So this was very big for me. Now, after, you know, within a couple of days uh, of, of when I was in the midst of this channeling process, um, all of a sudden in the middle, I was actually on my way. I was walking from the bedroom to the washroom and I heard a voice in my mind say, we the angels of heaven are here to help you now. And up until that point, I didn't know it was angels. And I really was overwhelmed with gratitude that they were even 
communicating with me in this way. But it wasn't like a really big deal, if you know what I mean. Like it was more like such a gentle process that it was just very, very natural. It was such a natural process. And so after that book came through, and of course I got it out there on Amazon, I did everything I needed to do in order to get that book out there. I then started to receive um, personal channels specifically designed for individuals. And I also at the same time started to receive more generalized channels, which are informational channels that come from many different sources, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Michael, the Palladians, um, and others. Uh, I think, uh, well, I can't remember now right off the top of my head the other ones, but they're all there. It's really, um, I don't in any way control the process. I My style is to um, really just open up and ask the spirit, you know, whatever needs to come through today, let it come through. Because I find that the most joyous process and it never, I, I never know what's going to come through. I don't know what's appropriate for the readers that are going to read the channel. Uh, but, you know, the messages are always for, for me as well. They're there to help me shift my attitude. They work with my current understanding, but at the same time, they stretch my current understanding. Uh, so it's a really interesting process. Now, the other thing I do, I do something called directional channeling, which is I ask a question. And I can receive a response. But that doesn't happen all the time because I think my preference is just to open up and just let come through what comes through. But I think the personal mm -hmm. channels could be more um, called directional channeling. In other words, I have a specific person in mind and then the information comes through for that person. Right. Yeah. So that's how it works for me. Uh, you had mentioned doing a live channel, and I would love to do that, but I've only ever done one live channel. I, I'm a written channel. So in other words, the information, like I speak with the person, we have a chat for 20 minutes, you know, half an hour, and then I, about a day later or the next day, whenever, whenever it happens, I, I go into a state of very deep listening. I call it level one listening, which is listening from the, from the level of the Christ mind. I go into a level one listening. And I just, the information starts and it comes through a feeling of love in my mind. And that's how I know it's real. It's not the information that makes it real. It's the love that makes it real. I, I know exactly what you mean. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I became a channeler in a very, you know, small nutshell. And it's a grow. It's growing, and you know, and I'm growing. I don't know. We don't know anything. The only thing I've learned in this life is aspire to not know. Fair enough. That's a good one. And it's not easy because the egoic mind wants to know. It wants to know, and it wants to plan for the future. It wants to know. It's, it, it, but everything that the ego mind is doing is really in direct opposition to what the Holy Spirit mind, which is what I call it. You know, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit mind really wants us to do, which is basically just relax and be shown, be guided, be guided in each and every moment. It really shows these days um, in the cities. You know, I live here, uh, uh, like downtown Toronto, downtown West, and um, With all the noise, there's also a level of uh, complete alignment. Right. And it seems to be that the louder the noise, the more alignment there is to balance it. I hear you. How I, I perceive it down here. Yes. Well, that's because you're... Could be quick. Sorry? I was just going to say that's because your dedication to spirit is shining through all the noise. And the noise can actually have the effect of um, expanding your spiritual mind, you know, your spiritual awareness and your alignment. It can actually, you know, not push us, but encourage us strongly to, to have that connection. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the noise could also be digital from all the screens around us and the phones and, and uh, 
downstairs here today. They they drill in uh, and they put in a new intercom and it's not the old one with the three. You know, my code was one, two, three so for all these years. <laughs> but now I don't know, you gotta bring the phone and you gotta scan it. So it's it's interesting how these things come come um the more this comes, the more that comes. They seem they seem to be balancing of each other almost. And um more people I see choose positive. Say that again, more people more people choose the positive path, the positive of, of to serve others versus to serve self. That's very good. More and more and more. Right. There's nothing more liberating and empowering than just letting yourself be used as a vessel for this for spiritual love. And we can actually do that when we're not feeling good. Like even when we're having health issues, it's like there's we can still open ourselves up to spiritual love. And that will heal our mind faster than anything. That's true. Right? And even when you're going through a really dark time, there's moments in your day that you won't it won't feel so dark. I call them peace pockets. <laughs> right? And there are moments that we can that, that we can actually anchor in more spiritual love. We can anchor in the light through those anchor points, through those moments that we that our mind is filled with peace and a sense of serenity or just you know not overthinking those are the moments that we that are very powerful and we can work with those moments like for example they can be the first thing in the morning you know when you're still laying in bed and you're you're sort of just coming out of your sleep and you just experience that sense of peace before all the thoughts start you know racing into your mind those are the moments to use to anchor more light into the mind Yes, I, I agree. It's it's a great practice to take take a deep breath, the first thing, and um, say your gratitude or your prayers, uh, whatever it is, even before you get out of bed. Right. Set yeah. your intention. Yes. Set your intention and let yourself be guided. You see, we, the thing we need to understand is that we need help in feeling better. We need help outside of the system, you see, because we're in the matrix. And we need, right. help. we need help outside of the matrix in order to be guided in order. To, by the way, there's two things right now. There's the trend right now. There's two things that we want more than anything. It's spiritual guidance and light. That's the two things that people are craving now. I'm doing, I'm going to do a seminar on it on Saturday. I'm going to do a, just a short session, hour and a half on Zoom um, with, you know, some some help in how to um, realize or access our spiritual guidance. It's not as difficult as most people think. People think, you know, oh, they, I don't hear a voice, for example, right? They'll think, well, I don't hear a voice, so I'm not being successful. But that's not the truth. Spiritual guidance comes, and we can develop it in, in, in beautiful and fun ways. So, yeah, that's the two things that we want the most, more guidance and more light. Absolutely. Um, how, would you, um, how would you describe light, more light in your life? Well, light is another word for truth. So when I talk about light, I'm talking about the light in our mind. And so the highest and the most powerful way to heal your mind is to hear a truth and accept it into the mind. You know how when you hear someone or you're reading something or you're hearing a video or, you know, and you hear someone say something that's very radical, but you recognize the truth in mm. it, that's the highest form of healing. Because we hear it and it's sometimes startling, but we know it's true and it's so delightful to our mind, right? It's, it's a radical and it straightens us out very quickly. That's the healing. That's the highest healing that we're capable of in this world to hear a truth and let it you know accept it into the mind so another the light light is another word for truth it has really nothing to do with physical light in you know in the in this in this light spectrum as such the light spectrum is not really what we're speaking of here we're talking about something beyond time and space absolutely and the uh, truth is always um it mirrors ego, if you will, and um, to put the ego away is to is to um, to accept truth. 
um, for, for all your own wrongs, uh, which may hurt a little bit, but then the relief of letting go reduces all the inflammation, the spiritual inflammation, if you will. Right. Um, and, and that allows for, for the peace. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, and it's not about like getting rid of the ego as much as it is about accepting whatever is coming up. With yeah. the ego, it's like we, you know, it's like not to fight the ego because that's a losing battle, <laughs> right? It's about really becoming the observer of the ego. It's true. And just noticing it, it you welcoming it, letting it be there. Uh, and we're here to undo the ego. We're not here to become friends with the ego. That's sort of a new age concept. People think, you know, become friends with the ego. The ego, the ego is trying to uh, destroy us. We're not here to become friends with the ego. We're here to undo it through forgiveness. Yes. And the ego is relentless. People think, oh, the ego was nothing. And yes, ultimately it is nothing. But you got to remember, the ego is a very powerful thought system. And it's not to underestimate. Mm -hmm. Go. And I don't want to say too much more about that because I don't want to frighten people. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we're, all, we, we're all up against the ego, right? I mean, we all we know basically what the ego does. Um, the ego, for example, I'll just sort of put this in here. The ego always speaks first. Yeah. In other words, when something happens to take you out of your peace, the ego speaks first and its voice is the loudest. Yes. So, you know, it presents its case first and it's usually one of doom and gloom and whatever, hate, uh, anger, whatever, you know, whatever is coming up. But it's like when we learn to create that spaciousness in our mind in the midst of the disastrous unfolding, let's say, you know, in, in the midst of the problematic thing that's in front of us, when we can learn to create a spaciousness and suspend our judgment for just a moment, we, we can then hear the voice from the Holy Spirit. We can feel that, we can feel our mind being corrected. The Holy Spirit is the great correction principle. It corrects our thoughts. So it gives us a loving thought which which um, substitutes, you know, takes the place of the ego thought. I use an exercise to help me um, put the ego back in check when it needs to. Um, after a while, you're right. You just, you just recognize it and it's like, okay, okay. <laughs> but right. the attitude is instead of giving more fuel to the fire, but really thinking of it as like a naggy, for me, you know, like you make your own into like like a little association, but like a little naggy child. Right. That's a good <laughs> like, yeah. like, okay, I heard you. Great, good point. And now I'll just put you over here. Right. Um, and, really cool. You know, get a sense of humor and and make light of the situ light make light of the situation. Right. Uh, things are you get you get, you get a bit of a of a of a, of a perspective from up there. You go, okay, it's not that bad, and put it in perspective and kind of. Show it back when it's to be until next time. All right. Well, that's very good because what you're doing in those cases is you're really creating a spaciousness for the correction principle, right? You're, cre you're creating a spacious spaciousness for the higher thought to come in and relieve your mind and show you the truth in the moment. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, perspective is a choice. It's a, it's a which you train for. Like, you got it. You just you just you're just there. That, that's you, that's your that's your default. Right. Yes, it does yeah. become our default setting. Yeah. Yeah. And when I talk about the Holy Spirit, I'm really talking about nothing more than your right mind. Mm -hmm. it's, there's two things running concurrently in our mind. It's the ego and the Holy Spirit. Now, I call it the Holy Spirit. Others have different you know, vocabulary, but that's what I call it. Because yeah. that's the language of A Course in Miracles. So there's two yeah. thought system running concurrently in our mind, the ego and the Holy Spirit. And so what we're training our mind to do is think with the Holy Spirit and relinquish the ego. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of, you know, condensed version of what we, what we do. Yeah. Um, if I can, <clears throat> um, 
There was something else I was going to say at the end uh, about that, about something you said earlier, but I just, I lost it there for a moment. I was going, oh, I, can I just say this? I was going to say, never feel bad, <laughs> you know, you, because you're in a position where you're feeling a lot of fear. When the ego comes up, you know, like you, you were saying earlier, when something happens and it takes you out of your peace and you have, you know, a certain technique to help you and these are all beautiful and we have to kind of find our own way of doing it. We have to navigate for ourselves but never feel bad for feeling bad it's really important to keep that in mind because we got to remember what's really happening here is that the, the the unconscious guilt is coming up from the unconscious mind the unconscious guilt and fear which which is absolutely horrendous is coming up from the unconscious mind and certain things will happen to trigger that unconscious guilt and fear and mm -hmm. so when it comes up, it's not to feel bad. It's to actually welcome it. It's just, it's just to notice it and to and to to work with it. But it's not to feel bad about it because it has to come up. And the unconscious guilt and fear stays dormant. It remains dormant in the mind. It can remain dormant for really, in a way, it can remain dormant for a long time, for lifetimes. Right. You know? But when it starts to come up, never feel bad about that just notice it and understand this is a potent forgiveness lesson you know to be able to take that and feel it you know it's like to feel it fully and then give it over to the holy spirit in the best way that you can yeah and to never and it doesn't matter how many times you have to do that it does take practice it really does. It takes a lot yeah. of courage, actually, you see. Yeah. Because most, you know, many individuals are basically trying to project the guilt and fear onto the world, mm. onto others, right? Onto their coworkers, onto politics, onto whatever. Like they're not really owning what's coming up, but rather projecting to get rid of it. So to, to notice it and to take it back to yourself and then immediately give it over to the Holy Spirit so he can exchange that thought with a real thought or we call I call it the miracle that's yeah. the work that's the true work that's going to heal our mind absolutely yeah. and and miracles um, are again in the in the right mind of the people right that's exactly it more than more than we've seen in a hundred years probably or more yeah because people you know are getting tired mm -hmm. the world is tired it, it, most there's so many people now there's so, i call it so many parts of the mind because in yeah. reality there are no people in reality there's just parts of the mind uh so yeah. there are many parts of the mind now that want to wake up and they have yeah. written very difficult scripts for themselves in this lifetime, but they've written difficult scripts because they want to wake up. Right. If everything is going hunky dory in your life, do you really want to wake up? That's very true. That that exact came up yesterday in our conversation, and I I reminded uh, was I was reminded um, that uh, Larry Harvey, the the founder of Burning Man. Right. In 2011, I was there and he came to speak and I saw him speak at, at the Burning Man Festival. Right. And, then, and Larry said, people won't make a change until the pain's too great. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and now the pain's too great. Right. That's what happens. Folks, yeah. And I want, people, you know, I want to say as well, I mentioned about, you know, most of us have written difficult scripts, not necessarily in form, but in content. In other words... You can see someone and you think they've got a great life, but they could be suffering internally yeah. for a lot. So it's not about the it's not about the appearance of someone's life. It's about what's happening in the mind. It's true. Yeah. And it's it's a novel concept in in the way that um, we never brought up to realize that we have to protect and nourish and train our right mind right yeah we, uh, that's, that's where the change. Yeah. sorry that it doesn't come naturally forgiveness doesn't come naturally we have to be we have to learn forgiveness i i wonder maybe it does but you know from such a young age we're a militant society it's 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 uh, it's it's us or them it's not like us and them right maybe that's 
I'm sure that's a lot to do with it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. See, we are taught, or I should say, from the moment we come into this world, we're really taught about division and separation. Yes. It's all about division and separation. It's all smoke and mirrors. You know, division, separation, and conflict. With a few good times thrown in to make, to keep us here on the wheel of birth and death you know, going around the merry-go-round. That's what duality is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. But you know, at the, same, yeah. at oh, the same time, a lot of positive, positive signs everywhere, whether it's um, young people going and, and uh, taking farms and working farms together. Right. Which I love seeing that. Um even here in Ontario, and, and people come together for all kinds of projects and, and beautiful relationships and creations are happening. Absolutely, because that's the awakening. That's the quickening. There, there are so many people that want to wake up, and, they, and they're coming from the right mind. You, you even see, like, movies, a lot of movies that are coming out. It's like you can see, like, demonstrations of those who are coming from the right mind. It's a beautiful demonstration. What, what do you find people struggle with the most these days? Uh, well, I'm going to say this because this is what's coming to me. Their individuality. Right. They, people struggle with being an individual in this world and being in control of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get over that. And we need to understand that there is no individual I in heaven. Now, when I say heaven, I'm not talking about a place. I'm talking about a state of oneness. State of oneness. Let's go, let's go back to oneness. Most people can't get themselves out of the way. <laughs> That's so true. Right. That's what we struggle with. You know, and it's not easy to unravel. In the Course of Miracles, it calls it specialness. We find it's very difficult to, to release our specialness. It takes years to do that. It's not an overnight process. Yeah. Taking some notes here. Yeah, and, and the specialness is, is much, much a product of the screens around us, you know, obey, consume, consume, obey. Right. Um, but, but, I do see, I, I do see people, young people, especially actually, which is which is very uh, comforting, and, and they're in it. They they are ex exploring um, better living, right? Um, all kinds of means. There, there's a place down the street where you do the sauna and then the cold bath, the the cold plunge, right? Yeah, very popular. Yeah. And then next door is next door is the organic cafe. Very good. And then next door is another organic. Cafe. It's like it's. It, it, yeah, and, and these are um, these are physical signs, perhaps, but the same people say, "Oh, I went to meditation, or oh, I'm doing this," and you can see it's more and more and more. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I find more um, compassion even on the street than used to be. The city can be very harsh, yes, but it's actually softened quite a bit in the last right. few years. Right, and you know, you will see that's you as well. Mm -hmm. That's you, right? Mm -hmm. You're a reflection of yourself. Yeah. Right. So that's you know what I would say about that, but I do understand exactly what you're saying. There are definitely signs, and you know, there's something else that's going on. I did a channel about this uh, probably about six months ago, and I don't I don't have it at my fingertips, but the channel was all about children who are now really not putting up with authority. You know what <laughs> authority figures are saying? They're not just, they're not taking it anymore. They're yeah. rebelling. They're, so there's this appearance of rebelling. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, kids are getting saucy and they're not, they're not, they won't work. They got no worth ethic. But that's not the truth. This is actually a movement of consciousness that children are basically coming out as light. Now it can yes. appear, it can appear as anger and rebelliousness. But it's actually not. It's just them moving towards higher levels of consciousness. They're not going to put up with the old ways anymore.
And it's a really yes. positive sign. Now, it's going to take a while for it to all sort of, you know, unfold and, and blossom. But this is really what's happening. Um, I, I, I could not agree more. Um, we really need new blood, so to speak. Right. That will just say, okay, the, now we're going to look, we're going to do things this way in more. And I think it'll be um, more truth. Right. Uh, more honesty, more uh, based on merit you got it uh, yeah more, more based on on um uh, someone who wants to be a public servant for example it's it's a mission for them and not a way to you know materialize stuff right or control people you or know control people. i'm just um, i'm just very quickly while we're speaking here if i'm looking distracted i'm just seeing if i can find that channel on facebook uh-huh and I will read it out for you. Maybe it might be of interest, you know? Yeah, please. Um, but we can keep talking because I know where this is a live video. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I, I forgot it's live. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. And it doesn't matter anyway. Because you know something? It's live, it's live I, the moment. <clears throat> you know, I used to be nervous over all kinds of things, like in terms of speaking and all that. And I got over all that. Mm -hmm. I just got over it. And that's one thing that happens, by the way, when you get yourself out of the way. You, you, you don't get nervous anymore. Getting yourself out of the way, it's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> um, th there's another one of the channels we've done with Ethan, which is the extraterrestrial that uh, we've been working with. Right. Came up that... Uh, came up um, about the population will shrink, will indeed shrink for yes. whatever reason. We didn't get to the reasons. Okay. I can tell you the reason now in a few minutes if you want me to. Sure. I can certainly and take a stab at it, put it that way. The reason is, okay, I'm going to talk about the Palladians for a few minutes. The, the Palladians are a, uh, let's call it a community, not a, not a community. That's not the right word, but you know what I mean. The Palladians uh, over time their population has diminished because it's just not necessary to bring new souls into the realm anymore the more a society or species or whatever evolves the less need there will be to bring new souls in it's just not necessary any yeah it's not necessary to come here and experience this anymore because we're going to be evolving out of this realm mm -hmm. So I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where did I hear this? But there was a need for 8 billion souls here to create uh, this change. Right. And once the job's done, you go back to wherever you came from. Right. Yeah. And that's a good way to look at it. That's really kind of saying, it's a different way of saying the same thing. Mm hmm yeah, we just don't need that. We don't need new births for our evolution anymore. So yeah. I want to read this to you if you want me to. It's called The Power of Children. And, and, and this particular channel is called, yeah. it's, it's not very long, and it's called The New Kids on the Block. All right, so this, you know, this is really heartening, very wonderful for people that have children that are concerned about them, maybe thinking, oh, my God, they're so rebellious, they don't listen, you know, that kind of a thing. Children will begin to announce their own inner wisdom with a bouncing and spiraling of new ideas. They are set on the divine equilibrium cause. They treasure the maps of the mighty angels. They are blessed with resistance-free zones and delight in listening for the grander perplexities found in parlaying their dipsticks in the science of the Palladians. New kids on the block will reveal much about the tiny tick of time when we lost our innocence and wonder and settle for a blatant misunderstanding of the truth. They will reveal through crystals and lightning pyramids about the false nature of this universe. Creative children are the new kids on the block. They will help us maintain our strong connection to God. Watch for them as they approach you with wonder. They will find you in the fields of nocturnal silence, or they will find you in a, in a at a ball game on a Saturday. Whether your name is Ed or Socrates, they will find you. They will convince you with one penetrating glance 
that there is no spoon. They will ignite your love of nature and instill a new appreciation for your fellow man. Look for them in science, literature, and the classics. Look for them not in special places, but in ordinary faces. You will know them because of the prickly sensation at the back of your neck, and they will take you to places you've never been, outside of time and space. Many more children know the truth than the mind that the mind is one and see it in their many activities and daydreams. They see the memory of ancient pyramids pop up in their mind at night. They see stars as saucers and flying disks. They dream of parades of oneness and streams of light penetrating their mind. These are precursors to the knowledge that the sun cannot be put out by the passing clouds of fallacy, that all is great, that and all this is a great start to the oneness of God. There is a light shining through all the pandemic pandemonium, pandemonium, and that light is one giant savior. Children are going to roll out new carpets in the coming days. As pandemonium increases, these children from all corners of the earth will come forth like puppets released from strings. They will sing one large and secular sounding and radical truth that the race to the finish line is over, that there's nowhere to go but inward to the capitulating oneness principle. They will be singers of long lost songs. They will be knowers of long lost truth. They will be tellers of long lost and ancient lore. They will reach for long closed ears and rock your world with ancient knowledge that you, you will mightily review and recognize. They are here to teach the world that there is nothing real about this world, not even the real it was filmed upon. They will refuse to be flies in this sickly ointment of mob boss tendencies towards better health and well-being. They know there is no well-being in the world because the only life is in God. The world is just a movie playing itself out and we get to choose the mindset of innocence and truth and the fact that everything is perfect behind the veil of this clip. The fun has just begun because the truth is coming out. Biding our time is not the answer. Seeing the trees for the forest is not the answer. Seeing the view from the other side is not the answer. Approaching one as the all, now that's the answer. Seeing the movie as just a film to be lovingly forgiven, now that's the answer. Understanding that your reality is safely fastened in God's mind while all this is playing out, that's the answer. Loving your fellow travelers like there's no tomorrow, that's the answer. So let's watch this movie together now and take all our learning and teaching with us for our popcorn snacks. Let's laugh and sing to the top of our lungs, knowing the truth of the non-existent past. Let's understand the only equation we care about is one plus one equals one and be done. With loving light, your brothers, your Palladian brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe that was that was supposed to come out right now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And and the idea of the children that bring the new dawn of truth and justice and social justice, true social justice, not fake one. The real one, right? Where we treat each and every one like a brother or a sister, and everyone's responsible for their own stuff, good or bad. You know, like you have to own it, right? Uh, and and then from there we can have a society. You know that we can cancel all the armies, just, just cancel them, right? <laughs> and cancel all the waste and cancel all the chemical spraying in the air and the water, right? Um, and 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 start living communally like we're supposed to. Right. Yeah. You know, it's true. And like, you can cancel everything. You can even cancel hospitals and doctors if we understood that we really don't need any of it. Like, the Course in Miracles says, nothing outside myself can save me. Nothing outside myself can set me free. Right. Now, that's not to say that we don't use these things and we, that we don't be normal in the world while we, while we think we're here, <laughs> because it's okay to be normal, to act normal in the world. But we're far from normal. 
we think completely different. We have, we have extraordinary minds. And that's the way we need to start really thinking about ourselves. We have extraordinary minds. You know, we can't just go halfway with this. <laughs> There's no half awakening either. Right, <laughs> right. You see it or you don't. <laughs> you're in it or you're not. You're in it or you're not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and at the same time, we, it's to be gentle with ourselves for wherever we are and whatever we're feeling is really important. You have to honor ourselves and where we are right now and to accept all things exactly as they are. And to understand that all things work together for the good, except in the ego's judgment. Because really, you know, when you think about yourself now, you know, maybe let's just, I'm going to just sort of think, I'm just looking at you for a moment. Would you really have anything any different than what it was right now? Even though it's not always easy, I'm not saying anything is easy because life is not easy in this world, but would you really have it any other way when it really comes down to it? I'm open to anything. So I, I, <laughs> most people say no, but I probably say, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try whatever. <laughs> I understand, but I'm but I'm speaking about right now. Would you really have it any yeah. other way? I mean, look at what you're learning. Of course, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's important to uh, it, it's it, it, you know when you sit comfortably on your chair in the beautiful library or by the beach. <laughs> sure. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. sure it's, it's, it's it, yeah, it, obviously it takes a lot of practice. So when the moment comes, you really need to realize what spot you've gotten yourself into it. And yeah, it'll take a bit of self forgiving, which is maybe the ego doesn't like it, right? The ego wants to hang on to it, and he's like, okay, okay, <laughs> so I'll put you aside for a second, right? Uh, so it, it, it. I, I, I can tell from personal experience that thing can, keeps coming up, keeps coming up, keeps coming up. And then you have to like start instead of arguing with it, having a dialogue with it. And then at some point you say, okay, now there's more than, right? There's, there's all of this. And the more you connect to it, the ego is more of a, of a it, 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 it becomes what it is. And you can see it or, or relate to it in almost as outside of you. And, you know, it's it's a program that runs. Right. The program never it never stops and it never changes. Right. So okay, so once I know this, it's it I I, I can handle it pretty good. Right. Yeah, it's a very um, good point. Yeah, the ego is is always there. It's relentless, and that's okay yeah. because once we understand how the ego operates, then we can learn to disregard it. There's one thing that the ego cannot defend itself against, and that's disregard. Mm -hmm. We learn how to disregard it through, through training our mind. We have to, you know, we have to have mind training. The, the mind is in desperate need of training because the ego yeah. is like a wild animal and it will run rampant. So we Absolutely. have to, blade, we have to keep the blade sharp. <laughs> and that's why we have each other. You know, in the course community, we call it mighty companions. We have, People that come into our lives, and we all have, you know, those that are in our lives that help us, help remind us of the truth. We need that reinforcement. And, you know, now more than ever, Stephanie, especially now that we all, like myself, live, well, I'm, I'm in a beautiful library, but actually I'm in a little condo downtown, <laughs> right? <laughs> Me, I'm on the beach, but I'm in Lindsay, Ontario, with 15 centimeters of snow coming tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, at least we got some. We got nothing here. <laughs> Yeah, well, but, we don't uh, have anything here either, but we're supposed to be getting some, I think, tomorrow night. But yeah, that's all. And I don't really think about that anymore. I just, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care what the weather is. I, I love some snow. Why not? Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the Asia, we all live in a tiny little spot and you don't even get to know your neighbors. And, and working in real estate professionally, I can, I can tell um, that um, most buildings don't have an area for, for, for the residents to, to come together. Right. And the cities don't have areas for the residents of the city to come together unless it's outdoors or unless you pay for it. And usually it has to do with alcohol. Now, what happens if you don't want to drink alcohol, you don't want to be in this state of mind, or you just, you just want to be free? 
Right. Um, there's nowhere in the city to actually sit, and it's a bit covered. You can maybe talk to another person. Right. Um, right. There's almost no benches left. They all take it out. Right. <clears throat> well, that is that is something that when I came to North America, I was like, where do people sit? Yes. I mean, to go, yeah. you know, like there's places to sit everywhere in overseas. Right. Yeah. Um, and and we need that back. So um, we've got the zoom the zoom uh, the zoom devices, yes. uh, which are somewhat like it. You know, it's a, it's a, it's maybe you can hug, but obviously I, I I can't drive to Lindsay tonight. So that's right. Yeah. So we are coming together um, in new ways and forming new relationships and new communities. We are. Um, sometimes if you're stuck in a little place, it's okay because you can still connect to. Any community you really want to, yes, and yeah. grow with them and you get can. the help because you're absolutely right. If you need help, you have to speak with other people, right? Or whatever it is to 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 really, it's very difficult to make a commitment and go on a, on a such a, a mind boggling trip right. uh, on your own. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you need to overcome your own little ego first to allow yourself to learn from others. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, if people wanted to learn more about the course, where would they go? Well, the Course in Miracles, the best place to start off, I would say, is just go to acim.org. Let, let me bring it up so um, people yeah. have something to relate to if they'd like to learn more. Yeah. It's, it's, it was my, you know, the path, it's not for everyone because everyone has to find their own path. And you know you will know what your path is when you you just keep going back to it over and over again. That's how you know what your path is. Right, and and I'll just say that we're not related to it by any way. Uh, no, no. social affiliate. The Course in Miracles, um, you know, the Course in Miracles is a book. It's a self-study book. Yeah. So there's no real organization no, no. as such. No. Did I hear you Did say? Uh, the website I'm gonna bring it up yeah just give okay. me a second yeah I'm gonna make sure I'm not closing the wrong window <laughs> I can share it. here we go here we are uh, let me yeah let me rearrange oh Okay. The Foundation for Inner Peace. And on that website, you can actually go and you can read A Course in Miracles online. It's an amazing search engine. Uh, you see the little block down there. It says read. Read A Course in Miracles. That's where you can read that. You can do your daily lessons. And it's an amazing, amazing site. It's very well done. You know, when I was exposed to this first, which is... Um... No, like six, seven, eight years ago, I thought it was the best psychotherapy textbook I've, I've ever been, I've, I've ever heard of. Right. That's that's it, obviously it's it's much much deeper than that. But um, right. on the first level, if you look at a psychotherapy, I think it's it's like an opening door to what it really offers, which is the oneness, the unity. That's and, it. And working working with your ego to allow yourself compassion and self-forgiveness and not allowing to put the ego aside so you can accept more and then compassion forgiveness to all around you very well said yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you I'll know bring a, people with oil. A YouTube. Yeah. i'll bring it on youtube just because i i listen to most of it on youtube actually right yes it's easier for me wow. yeah you got to find your own way of doing it right that's the way i look I, at it and you, yeah, I basically spent hours walking and listening to this, right? Uh, like for, for probably about a year. Yes, <laughs> just kept, just yeah. kept listening to it. Yeah. And for anybody that's interested, um, there we have a myself and my partner Lloyd. We have a Course in Miracle study group, or well, it's called Course in Miracle Support. Uh, we call it Course Support. We have over twelve thousand members. You so, want to share? Sure. It's called um, a Course in Miracle Support. And if you do a search on Facebook, we'll come right up there. Yeah. Okay, so um, people could learn from uh, um, 
reading or listening to the book or coming to uh, your group. Yeah. And and um, if you offer any services or anything at all, or how can people uh, reach you? Or so the see the writings. I have my. I think the easiest way to explain is. By the way, I can't really see my own screen right now, but I know you can still see me, and so that's the only thing that. Good. Good. You can get me. The fastest way you can reach me is going to um, stephaniefin.com. And it's S T E F A N I E F I N N.com. That's my website. And I also encourage everyone to just feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. You know, and you can follow me on Facebook because I do daily channels on Facebook. And you can, you know, reach out by way of Messenger and. I'm really accessible on Facebook. So it's, again, Stephanie Finn is S-T-E-F-A-N. Oh, thank you for putting my website up there. No problem. Yeah. And um, stephaniefinn.com and uh, Stephanie Finn, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E and F-I-N-N. Uh, beautiful. All right. Very good. And I have, I just did an interview this week with um, Life After Life, NDE, Near Death Is Experience. Yeah, they did, a, it was a lady in Vietnam, did an interview two nights ago. So that'll be up on my website soon. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, I really appreciated this opportunity tonight. Thank you so much. The whole thing was one channeling session. <laughs> I agree 100%. You know what I call it? It was a Holy Spirit conversation. Thank you so much. It, I wish it, I could uh, now, but I can't. <laughs> but that's so all much right. technology. So you're going to take care of everything from here, I'm assuming. You got it. Okay. And can you? would you be so kind as to send me the link to the video and I'll share it on Facebook? Absolutely. Okay. Love you, brother. Love you too, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And you as well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.